What is a mod? Very hard to explain. Probably can't explain it. Um, it was an obsession with clothing, with music, um, being able to go out on a Friday night and stay awake until Sunday night, just hanging out with your friends and partying and, and dancing, a lot of dancing. Um, just being around, and being seen. Oh, it just has so much more style, class, and girls loved it. <laughs> I mean, it was just a concept of modern, which is really kind of humorous today because we were actually doing something very retro. There was just something attractive about dressing nicely, but still being angry. Um, there was something more interesting than that than dyeing your hair green and ripping your clothes. It wasn't really mixed with any sort of intellectualism. It was just, we're sort of, we're dressed nicer, so we must be a little bit better and smarter than all of you. Vancouver International Scooter Rally. It's a get together for uh, scooters from all over. You know, we, we got people here from California, from uh, back east uh, in Ontario, and and all over. It's just a, basically a big get together. People show off their bikes. People of the same interest. This is probably my, I think my fifth Vancouver rally, and it's just always such a good time because more of the people from the states come up for this one. I'm doing what I like to do every year. I'm at a scooter rally on the west coast with people that I know from as far away as California, Oklahoma. Um, happens five or six times a year. It's always good to see the same people and get together with them. Sometimes it's the only time you see them in a whole year, but it seems like no time passes in between. It's like a big family. The three-day event involves this show, some skill riding competitions, uh, a long ride through the city where we enjoy the highlights of our city and show it off to those who have come from out of town and uh, we have a big barbecue where we have sort of games going on and awards for the best bikes that have been at this show and we basically go to good eating spots and good social spots all weekend. The best part of a rally for me it's really a, it's got to be the energy it's just especially after you do a big ride if you're doing a, a big windy ride you got that adrenaline and you stop and you're, you talk to your friends and you, you know, you have a few drinks and, and uh, it's, it's, it's really hard to explain but it's the energy. It's, it's a weird adrenaline that stays with you the whole weekend and it just, it's non-stop. We're having a little swap meet and a custom show and then I guess we're going to go for a ride. I'm not very good on facts. Now you're yelling abuse at me. Starting to walk my way. When I was about 16 years old is when I got my first bike and started riding then. And been there ever since. A friend of mine back in high school bought one because he liked them. He was an Italian friend of mine and uh, his mom wouldn't let him have it. So uh, he had to find a way of selling it quick and I was convenient. <laughs> and it was kind of sort of a neat thing to sort of try as a mode of transportation at the time. And, very quickly, you fall in love with a Vespa once you own one. The very first time I ever like, hung out with scooterists, I was about 15. And it was very brief, though, because I, I just didn't quite click with them. They were like, sort of the older scene, and they are, they're a lot older than me. So I tried being a mod for about three months and uh, realized it was, it was a little bit too much, um, too much time to dressing up and trying to look good. So I just, uh, I went with the bike. I bought my first scooter in 1986. I didn't figure out how to make it run or how to drive it till about six, four months later. I started considering myself a mod in 1981. Everybody in town had long hair, wore uh, Mac jackets and uh, big boots and listened to uh, heavy metal while the rest of us were running around with army parkas and suits. and. Uh, 
listening to rhythm and blues and the uh, the revival music from England. What is a mod? Well, I guess a mod back in the day meant modern, right? But modern now is a mod is not quite the definition for it because it's like the 60s version of a scooter rider that's the best dressed and looks, well, just that has the look, really the sharp. swank look, yeah. It's the swankiest, I guess. You Lots know. of mirrors on the bikes. You can always tell them. From yeah, lights, lights, mirrors, lights, mirrors, the showiest bikes, and the best dressed. Huh. Yep. <laughs> These voices when everybody leads the way, leaving me with nothing to say without you. And I can't control this. My thoughts are falling out on the cold crowd. Well, this is uh, usually the site of the Gymkhana, which is like an obstacle course people take their scooters on. It'll be a fun little crazy obstacle course and see all the crazy daredevil scooterists. It's, it's interesting, the scooter has sort of attracted people in waves over time and uh, certain periods of time what might be sort of a subculture <laughs> adopts the scooter and sort of gets folded into the existing scooter culture. So we have more recently um, guys that like to build sort of ratty racy bikes and not paint them nice colors but put stickers and racing equipment all over them, tattoo themselves and pierce themselves and stuff and that's a something that's been accepted by the scooter culture and rolled into it as, as part of what we do. Our club is uh, more or less into racing bikes, cut downs, choppers, and all customizing, and not really much of the, the uh, traditional and vintage, you know, such as this bike here. Um, no, no heavy machinery and crash bars and that sort of thing. It's just basically cut it down so it's lighter so it goes faster. In the past, there have been mods, especially in the early 80s, that have adopted the scooter culture. And you get guys with one-inch ties and four-inch lapels running around with stovepipe pants and stuff like that, hanging out with the tattooed uh, guys as well. And you get, you get all sorts. There's a lot of artists that uh, just fall in love with the image and the romance of the thing. And I just love the way the machines looked. Uh, it's, it seemed that no matter where I went, uh, you would see them driving around. but. Uh, you never really, it was so hard to follow the people because they're just so, you know, bound within each other. They, 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 they sort of follow each other and they never seem to stop anywhere. And, and that's basically my inspiration. There tends to be groups that stick together because they are of one ilk. There are things like the Grimly Fiendish, which tend to be um, a chopper club. They tend to be um, more of the skinhead style. Uh, and they just sort of all are, very interested in chopping down scooters and making them loud and big and noisy. Uh, there are other groups like the Wussies from Portland who are just, well, Portlanders. Uh, Gun-toting, strangely pierced and tattooed fun guys who like to get drunk and wear dresses. Um, in no way indicative of a large part of the group, I will say. There's only four of them, but they're the most colorful. I think people that ride scooters tend to be exhibitionists. <laughs> they, uh, they like themselves. They tend to be uh, usually socially gregarious. Um, well, there are a few shy people I know that ride scooters just because they like them a lot. But uh, these, the social scooter culture does have the characteristic of exhibitionism and gregarious behavior.
technically I didn't drive over my own head, but it came close to driving over my own head once and waiting at the light. And I was revving it, revving it. And I popped the clutch, put it in first and pulled a wheelie, fell off the back of the bike. And the bike turned around. Like when it came back down, the handlebars went to the right and the bike did a semicircle and rolled over my head. In my first year of riding, um, we, we rode 12 months a year and uh, you'd go to a party and, and have a bit too much and fall down. Um, they called me Crash for quite a while. In my first year I had 31 accidents. But it was okay, I'm still here. My favorite um, episode was riding, riding at about 3 o'clock in the morning, ripping home, doubling, and a Volkswagen Rabbit cut in front of me and uh, I wiped out for three blocks. I couldn't sit on furniture for three weeks. I'd stick to it, it was ugly. I heat seized on the upper level highway. I was probably doing about 120 and I had a passenger. And I, um, the sound of a seize is much like the sound of running out of gas. So I actually thought I was running out of gas and I leaned down between my knees to flip to reserve and I was just floating in air with no bike uh, because the back wheel just locks and it stops right where it was and I kept going and so did my passenger. And we just sort of slid on our bums for about 300 feet. We just kept going for a while and, you know, we were fine. The bike was a bit mushed, but it was fine. After falling down so many times, I pretty well just ride. Um, I was a motorcycle courier, actually a scooter courier, for a couple of years in Vancouver during Expo. And that uh, gave me a, uh, a better sense of, of uh, how vulnerable we are while riding. It was about at least once a month I was getting hit. So it uh, sort of opened my eyes a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't feel very nice. You're not talking to no lightweight. A pretty face don't turn my head. But you've been listening all night. I never heard a word I said. Must be sherry. You just won't set me free. This is uh, my scooter shop. Uh, this is uh, sort of a dream shop in a lot of ways. I'm always, uh, in the past, have been working either on the back porch or the pouring rain or in some really freezing cold garage. But I just bought this house and made this dream shop for myself. As you can see, it's full of all the tools and piles of junk necessary to restore scooters. This is where I keep uh, all of my little children, so to speak. Uh, We've got uh, a really old uh, Vespa Sprint. You can see it's Vespa Sprint on the back. It's uh, kind of a neat body style. They put uh, in this era, they started putting sort of racing stripes on the side. I don't know if they're really racing stripes, but they made this, the shape of the bike more angular during these years. Added kind of a, a neat uh, trapezoidal headlight, which is very rare, uh, very sought after uh, headlight handlebar assembly for this bike. Fixing it for a friend of mine, it just needed a bit of minor uh, engine work when she brought it in and taking it all apart, cleaning everything up and uh, taking care of stuff like that. Vespa is uh, uh, a far more elegant machine than the Lambretta. Lambretta has more style, cleaner lines, it's longer, it's leaner, it's faster. The Lambretta is uh, a faster machine, perhaps the body styling's better, but... Uh, they're a little harder to work on, they're a little more finicky, and uh, so for me anyway, that just means a little better. The engineering behind the Lambretta is not the same quality as the engineering behind a Vespa. There's definitely like the whole like Lambretta scene, you know, you're extra cool, especially extra cool in mod if you have a really nice Lambretta. It generally is sleeker and it just seems to be you know, more stylistic than the Vespa. Though I mean myself, I prefer the Vespa over the Lambretta because it's, it's just a more usable machine. It's, it's more common, it, it's easier to fix, it's easier to find parts for. Generally, maintenance is nothing. You know, you're looking at cables and oil for a year, which is maybe $300 and the occasional engine bit. I've been really, really lucky. I've never had one of those albatrosses that some people have had that they've spent thousands getting to not run. In total, I've probably spent about $1,400. Some people, it becomes like this, like this obsession, and they're like, oh my gosh, my scooter and they just spend like thousands, thousands and thousands, you know. It's gotten to the point where I actually don't like working on my own bikes anymore, I'm kind of lazy. I had an Allstate, 
which was made by Sears and Roebuck in the 60s. I think it was 1959 or something, the one that I had. It uh, had 8-inch rims. I never rode it. It was in really, really poor shape. The shocks were gone on the front. And I think I, I, think I rolled it down the hill, down the lane like maybe once. I drive a 1963 GS 160, which is kind of a nice, a nice scooter. It's one of the more collectible ones. And uh, when I bought the bike, although it was pretty straight as far as the bodywork goes, it didn't have its original paint anymore. So during a scooter rally in California, I just thought it'd be kind of interesting to have everyone who was there at the rally start signing my scooter. And I've been doing that for about four or five years now. Every time I go to a rally, I have everyone who's there sign the bike for me. And this, this is my, uh... Contessa, it was made by Triumph of Germany. It's a TWN, Triumph Work Nuremberg. And it's a really funky machine. It's got the twinkle motor in it, which is two pistons operating in one cylinder. Um, very interesting motor configuration that the Germans and Austrians were working on at the time. I bought this one uh, for $500 in Duncan off of uh, an old farmer that had had, had it since uh, his nephew or cousin had bought it new in 1957. And uh, the guy uh, left it in the the barn for the entire time. We started it up after sitting there for thir almost 30 years uh, just by putting a new battery and fresh gas into it. Amazing find. Really cool bike. I mean, the real common thread is the bikes these days. Uh, people who are interested in them, whether it's mechanically, stylistically, or socially, they all come together for this one reason. The bikes are an important thing. They're a rare oddity. It's a very rare occurrence when you see these things. I mean, there's millions of them, but they're all over, they're spread, they're... And the whole essence of being in this community, this mod thing, it's, it's all about the bikes. I think that's where the personality comes from. from England come to us in the early 80s in Vancouver. Um, scooters were part of that whole street aesthetic where if you wanted to get downtown in style, the best way to do it was either on a Vespa or a Lambretta. A mod isn't just someone who dresses up in a suit and rides around on a Vespa, that's not a mod at all. I can actually happily say that I didn't see Quadrophenia until after I said I was a mod. Um, mind you, after that I saw it about 70 times. But that was just part of the being, the, being in the group, right? We'd uh, Sunday afternoon ride up to the Ridge, Ridge Theater on Arbutus and just hang out and watch the movie and spoil the experience for all the normal people there. But it was our movie. I've always liked the 1960s. I've always liked the whole fashion appeal to it, the whole hair sense of it, the whole general sleekness of it, I've always really, really liked. It wasn't so much the importance of being part, part of the group as, as just looking good, you know, driving a, a really nice looking bike and, and looking good on it. You had to have the right suit. If your buttons were the wrong size, you know, your friends would make fun of you. If your lapels were too wide, well, then you were just trying. You weren't succeeding. Um, the girls were supposed to sort of conform to a certain style of cute. But of course, at the same time, it was the early 80s. 
and that creeps into it as well. So no matter what, you were still getting, you know, bad feathered haircuts and, and you know, a little bit of that sensibility was in there. You, you even look at Quadrophenia and the hairstyles weren't from the 60s, they were definitely from the 70s. So it did take a little bit of a leap from the original, the original 60s look, but you still had to have the right stuff. Most of the, uh, the mods and scooter boys that were around in the beginning were uh, upper middle class, uh, all had a home to go to uh, for the most part. There was, there was no way you could have carried off the, uh, the image um, without that kind of a background. You needed the stable, the stable home, the stable work, the stable money. If you don't have any money, you don't have any cool clothes or, or you, know, you can't fix your bike. It doesn't work. Some of the appeal to scooters is the fact that you aren't doing a common thing. There's a lot of that, that you are doing something that is a little bit weird, a little bit unique, um, and is still, in a sense, an elite sport because not everybody can participate, not everybody can af afford or deal with the vehicles. Um, so there's a lot to that, that it's just a little bit different. Uh, there is a whole mystique that's attached to them that's kind of fun. Any scooter enthusiast, uh has seen a Roman holiday and, and knows that uh, the scooter is, is, uh, you know, is more of an accessory rather than, <laughs> than an actual vehicle. I think everybody likes to be seen in some good light and a scooter uh, sort of is like a good accessory. It really uh, makes you look pretty good. It is always used by a lot of people as an image of a fashion item. Um, the fashion industry has, in the last five years especially, been very interested in the Vespa scooter. And they'll go to great lengths to find a nice scooter to match their models, et cetera, to sell their clothes. And I don't blame them. I mean, it's, a, it's something that makes anybody look good. Without the fashion, there never would have been a scooter scene. Um, originally in the 60s, the, uh, the fashion was probably about four or five years before the scooters came into it. Um, the scooters came in as, as a mode of transportation, and, and that only. And it was only after. Uh, after the media got a hold of it, that uh, that they started dressing their scooters up and whatnot to be as as ultra cool as as their clothes. I don't think though that uh, I really think of it as a fashion item. It's sort of more than that. It's uh, it's it's the it's the fashion item. It's the centerpiece of 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 what I what I wear or am or something like that. And it's a little bit more integral to my person than just a something that I put on when I go out. I don't know if it's a voluntary thing. I think you buy a scooter and then it, the, the personality seems to follow it. A lot of the people involved in the scooter scene um, eventually you know, become a part of their machines. Uh, the, the people I've talked to are, are identified by the machine they own, which is something I found really strange. Uh, for instance, um, the, the painting that I did for Mel, Mel's Rally, I eventually met the person who bought it off of Mel, but it was still known as Mel's Machine. So the bike sort of took on the character of the person who previously owned it, which, which I found kind of interesting because uh, the machines themselves took on character rather than just being a bunch of nuts and bolts all screwed together with a couple of tires. When you're driving around, you, you always get looks. You know, sometimes you may get laughs, you may get points, uh, people pointing at you, you know, but it's definitely, you know, some people, Notice you on, on one of these scooters, and some people, you know, they just don't, they don't even, they have no idea what the subculture is about, and it's, but you, you know when people do know. You know people that are looking, just by the way they're looking at you, um, if they know what's going on or not. I don't, you know, some people look at you and think, it's a geek on a moped, and uh, sometimes that works to our advantage, but, uh, you know, we don't care. There's lots of, of female riders now, a lot more than there used to be. The, uh, the girls basically were passengers, and uh, there was very, very few girls that actually rode their own scooters, but it's, it's a lot more now. It's harder for girls to break in to the 
scene a little bit just because guys don't tend to take us very seriously. But once I've helped a few guys, you know, fix whatever's broken on their bikes, I think that they start to maybe pay a little bit more respect. It was kind of intimidating. Um, we, we weren't encouraged to go off and get our own bikes. I remember one friend actually telling me that girls shouldn't have bikes because we wouldn't be able to fix them. Um, I explained to him, sure we would, we'd get you to do it. A lot of the times the guys clubs are so, um, all the girls just seem to end up being the girlfriend or the wife or kind of a tag along. But we thought that since because everyone who's in the club now is a, has a pretty strong personality and we've been scooterists in our own right, that we should have an all girls club. I like being a girl and actually riding rather than being a girl on the back of someone's bike. That I think is bad. <laughs> Unless it's, you know, your bike's not working or something. I definitely like the fact that I ride and I like the way that makes me feel rather than just being some little girl on the back of the bike, you know. Best rally? That's a good question. They're all they all have their own unique character. Like they all yeah. have like um, a lot determined by the weather. <laughs> and that's true, because a lot of it in Seattle is a bunch of rain. But we have a good rally. And you know, I went to San Francisco once and that was a really good time because there was a lot of bikes. I think that was the most bikes there's ever been at a rally. The best rally I've ever been to was the very first Vancouver rally that we called the uh, Vancouver Scooter Portage. It was uh, when we were all young enough to get into a lot of trouble and not have any consequences. And uh, we did a lot of wild things, uh, um, basically taking over Robson Street for several uh, minutes while we clogged up the city and gridlocked it with the bikes and uh, parties on the beach. And, uh, and I don't mean hidden beaches, I mean uh, English Bay. <laughs> uh, that was probably the best rally I've ever been on. The Vancouver Rally has been sort of special for years. A lot of people come from all over the country to join in something we used to do. We don't do any more. We'd have an annual cliff jumping. It was just sort of right around the corner and we'd all come down here and we'd spend an afternoon sitting in the sun and egging people to jump off the cliff. Many people would love to, many people just got convinced to. Uh, and it was something that a lot of people just thought was the bizarrest thing. We had two people from California so impressed they jumped in fully clothed. I would have to say that the best rally that I've ever been to would have been um, probably the first Victoria rally in 1985. Um, just because it was so new and we'd never had that many scooters together before here. And most of us were just of age so we could get into the bars and all of that. So just being away from our houses and, and with no responsibilities, just being able to go out and ride around and party for a couple of days was fantastic. And this picture here is a picture of a whole bunch of us on, on a Victoria rally many, many years ago. A lot of these people are still around riding scooters and uh, they've grown a little older, but they look basically the same. Um, these pictures here are, are pictures of a, a really neat thing that a friend of mine, Chris uh, Einan, and I did. We went to Italy with our bikes and we rode from one end to another in a, in a rally type race and so we got our race numbers on and we'd ride from little town to little town in Italy and each place we'd stop at checkpoints and socialize with the locals for a while. And this is us at the end of the race. Uh, a friend of mine, good friend of mine, Tino Sacchi of the Lambretta Club of Italy. As I've grown older with my scooters, uh, I think I've sort of seen a more global place for scooters. I now have friends in many different countries that ride scooters um, and an international network that has been developed amongst scooter riders of the world essentially through uh, the various clubs in all the different countries. The one fascinating thing about scootering, and it's probably the same with any car club, is you are welcome anywhere in the world. And basically, and it's wrong because you shouldn't, but you generally trust anybody you meet anywhere in the world who's part of a club of scooterists because you, you are of the same ilk, you have the same interests, so you sort of don't think they're a serial killer or something right away. Um, we just traveled through Europe recently and we ran into somebody who lived in Germany that we met on a rally in Vancouver and just went and stayed with them for five days in this little town in Germany. And if I had just met this person in a bar, I would never have done that. But you sort of have this common connection. We all know somebody who knows somebody. So it's very unified throughout the world now. It's very much, um, through the internet especially, has made this a very global community. <laughs>
scooters are a bit of a target. Uh, people don't like things that are as different as scooters sometimes. And uh, I've had a scooter, the one I'm sitting on here, was stolen once and uh, vandalized and then uh, torched, actually, um, left to burn in the middle of Hastings Street at about 4 in the morning. Uh, it's kind of a sad thing to do to a machine. If you want to attack something, you should find something that can at least defend itself in some way. In Seattle, a girl had her bike thrown onto train tracks just last year and a train ran over it. Um, somebody had their bike thrown into UBC Bog. We see that more than anything, joyriding. You know, you're drunk, you want to ride home, you see this thing sitting in the alley, you try to drive it. I've had that, I've had that kind of an attempt three times on my bike. There's two kinds of theft. You have joyriders, people that are curious about the machine and they'll steal it and try to ride it. You often find those three or 400 meters away because they couldn't get it started or several kilometers away where it ran out of gas or something like that. But there have been incidents um, where bikes have been stolen, none of mine other than the one in California, and they just disappear. The good thing about this city, this scene's pretty small. Everybody knows everybody's bikes. And so like that helps to sort of, there's that extra bit of security there, but definitely like there's, there's theft. I, just, just like anywhere, any, any automobile or anything, there's always theft. When we were younger, I'll honestly admit we were part of it. Um, when I say we, I don't really mean me. It was mostly the guys. There was a lot of intercommunity theft. Um, <laughs> just so much as somebody got a nice accessory and it would suddenly move to a different bike. Generally, you could figure out whose bike and get it back. But uh, later on, it got more serious where people who were close to the community but not necessarily fully involved would start stealing bikes. But because we're such a tight community, that was foolish. Within a day, we'd know where the bike was and uh, be able to take it back. much to encapsulate in one band but it really it really has to do with the per personal preference because there's so many different people in here there's you, you've got your skinhead uh, factions you've got the straight up kind of uh, suit wearing uh, mods the the jazz listening kind of guys and you guys you got the guys and the girls that are just like into it for like having the fun and and partying and it's a lot of rave influence uh, old hip-hop um, ska. The scooter scene is, is kind of interesting in that it has a, an image of ska music associated with it um, from the early 80s. A lot of people that were into scooters were also into ska. You can almost not shake that image, although a lot of people that ride scooters were really into punk rock in the late 70s and early 80s as well, and a lot of the sort of new wave stuff was very much scooter associated. I used to kind of like a lot of the, the ska music. Um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, things like, I like, I like that a lot. Um, the music I like now is more of the 60s garage style music, 60s punk rock. I really, really am attracted to that. Desmond Decker, uh, The Jam, Cast, um, Older Blur. I, you know, I do like lots of different kinds of music. I also like crazy things like Scylla Black and, uh, uh, like, not necessarily mod or ska bands, but other like 60s sort of poppy kind of crazy bands and a good mix, you know. I think the 60s they really experimented. Well, they were really discovering music, so there's lots of good music there. They're really figuring out how it all worked together. There's so many types of the, uh, the music and I like them all. Um, I love the, the mid 60s uh, rhythm and blues that came out of London, some of the American stuff. Um, the 79 Revival mod music is still r really big to me anyway, just because it was, it was really new when, when we were into it. So you could actually go out and buy a new album. Um, and then the ska was very 
very popular, the blue beat and the ska. Um, more more in tune with the skinhead stuff, but uh, but very danceable, so it was accepted. Some people music is very important to you, and some people music is just like music to them. It's the background music, and I find it's probably the same here in this little scene. I mean, music does definitely play a little bit more of a role, and there is definitely more like the alternative type bands, not like alternative music, but alternative bands to what's normally played on other radio stations, things that don't get media coverage, there's, they're a lot more known in this kind of scene. It might be cliche, but when The Who comes to town, you see all types of people there. You see people anywhere from the skinheads to the real dedicated mods to the sort of hippie type people that ride scooters. Well, for me, I guess it would have to be the jam because I'm a mod and that's the music that I first got interested in. Um, it's heavily connected with scooters and it's the mod music of my generation because I wasn't old enough obviously to be involved with the music of the Who from the 60s, but the jam were the late 70s equivalent and they kind of kick-started the scene. I guess if you were to say which was the, the ultimate mod band, it would be either the jam from the, uh, from the 70s and 80s or uh, the Who in the 60s. I, I don't know that there is a quintessential scooter band. A lot of people would say the Who because of their work with Quadrophenia sort of brought back scooters into, into popular culture, but uh, again, they don't really fit the image of the average scooterist. Best concert, it's probably got to be Lollapalooza 1. Everybody was there, everybody. I don't know, I'd say it would have to be Lollapalooza, the first one down in Enumclaw. Uh, Enumclaw, Washington, it's a good place. It's a big county fairground kind of place. Uh, who was there? Sushi and the Banshees and uh, the Violent Femmes, sort of also bands that scooter people sometimes like, or maybe I'm speaking for myself only, I don't know. Susie and the band, she's got to love her. She's excellent. Probably the specials um, three and a half or four years ago at the Town Pump. That was one of my favorite concerts because it was packed, it was sold out. You had to buy your tickets in advance. And it was just such a fun crowd. Like everybody was dancing and there was, you just, you couldn't even hardly move because it was so packed and it was just such a fun energy. And the specials are such a great band that all, like every song, everybody sang to and it was just amazing. One of the bands that not necessarily represents the scooter scene but really uh, is nostalgic for me it would be King Apparatus from Toronto. They just played so many shows and uh, so many of the scooters went to those shows. Every, every couple months they'd, they'd be in town and we'd all go and we'd just party our faces off. good question. That's a really good question. Because if you're really drunk, how do you remember? But actually, you know what? I got a story. It was about Victoria, Victoria Scooter Rally about three years ago. I just finished off 40 pounder Southern Comfort and I was working on my second one. And I was being chased down by a motorcycle policeman and I was riding a Vespa 100 and I was trying to get away from him on the beach and I don't know I don't know what happened, but I, th I got away. Or did I get away? I don't know. We went $300 year. worth of booze, so we were like stacked out for the whole weekend, and we had just booze like nonstop, and just kept drinking the whole time. And we couldn't Which give it away. A, yeah, we couldn't give it away. There was too much booze to even give away. It was horrible. But it was, but it was entertaining. We had fun. I was drinking till the next April. Yeah, there was that much boo. It's like we, we kept it going. We couldn't bring it back over the border, so they had to leave it at my house. <laughs> it all came down to me. It was a big throne of beer in my living room. But it was fun. We have good pictures. Well, I've had to have people carry me up from beaches before. I'm the best drunk you'll find, to be honest. You'll never know I'm drunk. Never, never threw up on a rally, I can tell you that. For some reason, I tend to drink immediately after breakfast. Immediately. But that's usually because in Seattle, when you go to a restaurant, there's a bar attached to the restaurant. So as soon as you finish your bacon and eggs, you go into the next room and, 
then you're starting. This is the Pig and Whistle in uh, Gastown in Vancouver. Um, this has sort of been the scooterist home for as long as I've been involved with the uh, with the scooter boys and whatnot. Um, I've always liked to say I've, I celebrated three 19th birthdays here. <laughs> Mustang Sally night? Mustang Sally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny night. Uh, I think they were, all, they were all in such great moods that they didn't want to stay. They didn't want Scott to get married. They just wanted to be, <laughs> was, remain one of them. That was, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I sang yeah. Mustang Sally about 35 times. Uh, yes, that's One true. verse, because that's all I could remember. <laughs> I was standing like a tripod, because that's the only way I could stand. And some of the, some of the patrons in the bar had decided that they'd heard quite enough of one verse of Mustang <laughs> Sally. So Daphne gave him shit and kicked him out. Can't ruin my stag. <laughs> How much of a drinker myself? Everyone, most of the whole scene, are very much into beer and drinking and stuff, but I myself personally don't, not much of a drinker at all. So I don't, I think I'd be so scared if I was, if I was to be drinking and driving, I'd be so scared. I don't really know what a mod is, to be honest with you. A mod is somebody that tends to be overly wrapped up in style, overly wrapped up in their own image in the real world, and somebody that's, you know, quite concerned with the way they appear to other people. And that's perhaps why they adopted scooters, was because they uh, are a fairly stylish thing, but they're unique. So you have both the loner and the uh, belonger in the same kind of thing, and the scooter can do both and be stylish. I'll definitely always own a scooter. Um, in fact, uh, my wife and I have a 15-month-old daughter, and uh, we're already planning on getting one for her and putting it away. So when she's big enough, she can uh, learn how to ride. I don't know if I see myself riding it forever. I'm sure I'd like to keep it as long as I can. I'd like to get a car. As uh, my leisure time increases, uh, tour the world on a scooter. It's one of those things I do. And the other thing I see is continuing to play with these as, as a hobby for the rest of my life. I mean, it's never going to go away. I'll, I'll always have a scooter at somewhere in my life, like whether I'm riding it every day or if I'm riding it secondary, but I'll definitely like always be a scooterist. I can see myself always being a part of this community and always being involved in it. I, I have no needs or desires to stop being a part of the scootering community and stop doing uh, the things that I do with it. I, I love it and I'll always ride. I have only dreamt one thing Though it may sound simple I know for certain we were together once before I love Let's